four of the 2020 scholarship physics exam. Right, question four. Um, there you go. Uh, pair of, uh, parallel pair of fixed horizontal conducting tracks, uh, track A and B, lie in a uniform magnetic field as shown. Track A is divided by a switch on either side which, of which rests two identical metal wires, each of which has resistance R that can slide without friction along the tracks. Just quickly highlight that. Um, initially, both W1 and W2 or Y1, Y2 are stationary. Um, where with the switch open, Y2 is given a short push to the right and then moves at a constant velocity V. So they push that one there to the right um, and moves just away at a constant velocity because the tracks are frictionless. Explain what occurs to the electrons in W2, so in Y2, as they move through the magnetic field. So this is, oh, this is year 12 um, physics, I suppose. Um, right hand slap rule, we uh, magnetic field pay, uh, magnetic field lines into the page. The velocity is to the right, so we, we pick one positive charge, um, and then the whole thing just applies to all of them. So all the positive charges are going to get forced to the top of the page. So the top of the page up here is going to become positive, um, and then the bottom of the page obviously becomes negative just because of symmetry. So explain what happens to the electrons in W2 um, as they move through the magnetic field. Um, they just move to the bottom of the, I don't know, the page or towards wire, uh, wire, rod, TB. I'll pause it and write it out slightly more succinctly. Right, so obviously the electrons experience the force downwards. I could have said, I, maybe I could put brackets because of the right hand sap rule, but that's just the rule that you used to figure that out. Charge separation occurs and a build up of, uh, of electrons at the end TB, so this end here, um, causing a voltage slash potential inference. That doesn't make sense grammatically, but I mean, it covers what you need to know. Right, explain why W2 slides along with constant velocity. So, this whole sort of, I don't know, get up or set up, I think it's been asked before, maybe, or maybe I've just read it in a textbook somewhere, um, or had the same question in a textbook. Um, so as the, like, I don't know, wire two moves through the magnetic field, initially when the charge separation occurs, those moving electrons would experience a force which would oppose the motion. But once they're fully separated, the electrons can't move. So if you don't have a moving electron, it's not going to interact with the stationary magnetic field. Um, so there's going to be no net force. Um, so the wire will just keep on rolling. That, that's pretty it. Um, I'll pause it and just... Oh, and there's no friction as well, so that's why it just keeps on rolling. I'll pause it and write it out slightly more succinctly. Right, so I said during charge separations, the electrons, uh, the moving electrons will experience an opposing force, but after this, the electrons are effectively stationary, so there is no net force acting. And because these brackets know zero, uh, there's zero friction, thus, the sh oh, that is capital T, thus the wire W2 slides at a constant velocity, um, and that's Newton's first law. So, yes, yeah, really about it for that. Um, question C. While W2 is moving to the right, or Y2 is moving to the right, the switch is snapped shut. Describe and explain the subsequent motions of both Y2 and Y1. So now, if we flip over the page, we are going to have a flow of current from positive to negative, conventional current. So the current's going to go like this, doo -doo 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 -doo, down wire 1, if you can sort of see that. Um, back along, this is just conventional current, not the flow of electrons. Um, so it's going to flow anti-clockwise. There we go. So now what we can need to do is when you say, well, what's going to happen? We've got moving electrons in wire one. What's going to what's going to happen to those electrons? So we just pick, or well, we'll just use positive charge because we're dealing with positive charge. So we're just going to look at what, what's going to happen to one of those positive charges. Chuck a positive charge in there. Right hand slap rule. Um, magnetic field is moving downwards. The charges are moving from A to B. So it's going to, the wire is going to experience a force that way. So I can sort of see my hand pointing down. Thumb is the direction of the moving charges. Um, so out of my palm goes the force. So like that. However, when this starts moving, the charges, and what, oh, this is moving as well, so the charges inside wire 1 and the charges charges inside wire 2 will both experience a force um, which will oppose the separation. However, it'll get to a point where the, like the opposing, I don't know, I'll just chuck it in like an opposing force, 
um, on the electrons will essentially balance out. I don't know how to describe this. This is like hocus pocus uh, without sort of just knowing the answer really. Um, and you end up with, uh, I'm trying to think if you can work backwards with the loop rolling through the, yeah, no, that's not actually part of the NZ twist. There's an NZIP question where you have a, a loop of wire falling through a magnetic field. This is pretty much the same as that. So what ends up happening is the top wire ends up being positively charged. Um, hold up. No. Yeah, it is. So the top, up top here, all becomes positively charged, both wires, and the bottom all becomes negatively charged. And you can think of this whole th thing as a square, a single square moving through a magnetic field. And if you know from Lenz's law, is it Lenz's law? Um, the wire down here, all the charges, or all the positive charges move to the top, and the wires on the top, and like the, I hope you can see that. So all the charges from this, this side move to the top, all the charges from this side move to the top, and you don't get a flow of charge between them. So then all of a sudden the charge stops flowing, and you get sort of essentially equalization. And then you go, well, how fast are they going? Well, that's a conservation of momentum question. Um, momentum is essentially exchanged by like the magnetic fields. Well, via forces, this force creates a force which interacts with these electrons, or it generates a flowing charge. That flowing charge uh, interacts with the stationary magnetic field, which generates a force, which then speeds this up, which then slows that down. That's a force pair. Um, and yeah, so we have essentially a momentum question where we have the initial momentum. Um, we'll just call this, or oh, this is Y2, uh, Y2. So M2V2 is going to be equal to, these two will have the same velocity. If they don't have the same velocity, the square is getting bigger or smaller. Um, so it's going to be uh, M1 plus M2 bracket over V final. No, no, call it V final, whatever. And now we can see that if the masses are the same, which they are totally probably the same, identical metal wires, they are, the final velocity is going to be half the initial velocity. So both of them are going to have half the initial velocity they would have had, or half the initial velocity of wire two. Cool, right, I'll pause that and uh, write that up here. Right, so I said when the switch is shut, current begins to flow anti-clockwise around the circuit. Wire 1 experiences a force to the right, accelerating it. Wire 2 now will have a current flowing from B to A, or from TB to TA. So wire 2 will have the current going up that direction, which means it's going to experience a force backwards. So it's going to experience a force to the left, which will slow it down. Right, um, and I said this, uh, this will induce a force opposing its motion, full stop. Thus, um, wire 1 will accelerate and wire 2 will decelerate until an equilibrium is reached where they both are traveling at the same speed, um, V over 2. We showed that over the page. At this point, TA, uh, or at this point, at this point, end TA, so basically both ends of the, like, wire um, will become positively charged. And it's essentially like a box, I mean, it's in lots of textbooks, We have a box falling through a magnetic field, one side of the box becomes positively charged, the other side of the box becomes negatively, negatively charged. Um, you get charge separation, um, but no current because there's no loop outside the magnetic field for current to flow. Um, right. Um, at this point, it will positively charge for both w, uh, Y1 and Y2, and thus no current will flow, thus net force is now zero, constant velocity will occur. Um, determine the final velocities for W1 and W2, explain your reasoning. So, I mean, I've already sort of explained that. I mean, we already sort of figured that out and explained it for here, so I'll just write it up. Right, so I've said wire 1 and wire 2 will experience the same size force uh, until they are traveling at the same speed. As there are no external forces, momentum is conserved. Um, thus, the mass of wire 1 um, times the velocity of wire 1 is equal to the mass of uh, times the velocity of y, the mass of wire two times velocity of wire two because that's the initial wire that's moving is equal to the mass of wire one plus the mass of wire two because they're traveling at the same speeds. So you can sort of think of them as combined um, times the final velocity. 
Um, and then you can rearrange final velocity equals V2 M2 over M1 plus M2. The Y is identical, so you can just say it's just M um, instead of M1 and M2. Um, so you end up with M over 2M, and, and the Ns just cancel out, so you just get final velocity is equal to V2, which is the initial velocity of Y2, divided by 2. And that tells you it's the Ys will go half the speed. Um, cool. Right, explain the energy changes that follow as a result of the switch being closed. So just a little foresight. Um, both wires are, well, both wires are identical and they're going half the speed of the original like setup. And because velocity is squared, velocity counts far more for kinetic energy than mass does. Um, so, I mean, straight off the bat, the energy is just going to be halved. Um, and you can sort of see that with, oh, you can just add them together. So like, hold on, just compare the EK. So EK of like initial is equal to half uh, M initial uh, V, well, of course initial um, squared and EK final is equal to half um, 2 M uh, VI over two squared. V over two? Yes. Oh, yeah, VI2. Yep, yep. Um, and this is essentially equal to um, half uh, E, K initial. Because you can see this is going to be half of that. Um, because you've got the 2 times the half. That's cool. Which gives you 1. Um, but then you've got half squared, which gives you a quarter. Um, and then you've got... Oh, wait. Yeah. Hold on. You get a quarter of the energy. Yeah. Oh no, I'm an idiot. You gotta pull that half out again. Um, otherwise, you, because the kinetic energy formula is half mv squared. Um, so there you go. Right, so explain the energy changes. I mean, you're gonna lose energy to the resistance of the wire. And the resistance of the wire is R of some sort. It does have resistance. Yes, each of the wires have resistance R. So they're gonna lose energy to essentially heat. Um, so I'll just pause it and quickly write it up. So finally, um, as the velocity for both wires is half the initial, 50% of the kinetic energy is lost. We just showed that up here. Um, via thermal energy due to the resistance of the wire, um, and input comma and EM radiation emitted. So if the wires had no resistance, you would be like, where did that energy go? Because this still happens. And this, there is another capacitor question where you can have um, two capacitors like so, and you have a switch here, and a switch here, and you have another capacitor like this, and you have this capacitor, and they have identical capacitors, you have this capacitor charged, this capacitor uncharged, when you flip the switch and charge equalizes, you can have imaginary wires with no resistance whatsoever, you still lose half the energy, and you think, what the heck, where does it go? Um, it goes into the fact that when current travels around the loop, because it has to travel around the loop, um, you get self-inductance, um, and essentially you get dissipation of dissipation of energy via magnetic fields. Um, so, yeah, that's that.